Surfacing can be daunting, but there's no need for it to be. In SOLIDWORKS, solid and surface modeling use many similar features and it is easy to move between the two methods. In this video, we'll take a look at what surfaces are, why they exist, where you might use them, and introduce you to a few of the most commonly used surface features. Surfaces are a type of geometry with zero thickness, meaning the surface is infinitely thin. Usually in SOLIDWORKS, we work with solid bodies. In a solid body, every edge is the boundary between two faces, which creates a watertight enclosed volume that can contain mass. Conversely, a surface body will have edges that are bound by only one face, leaving an open model with an open volume. The solid bodies that you'll be familiar with within SOLIDWORKS are in fact surface bodies that have had their thin shells knitted together and filled with volume. We'll demonstrate this using this simple model. If I use the delete face command on any of the faces, see how the solid body in the feature manager disappears and is replaced with a surface body. The volume that existed within has gone and we're left with a single open surface. Also take note of the edge colors. The edges of a solid will be black as will the knitted edges of a surface, while the open edges of a surface will be blue. It takes a few more operations but if I were to create a new face in the place of the one I just deleted and ask SOLIDWORKS to knit it back together, we then have a solid once again. Using surfaces to create simple shapes like the example we just looked at would not be the recommended approach, as it would require more features than just using solid functionality and therefore take longer to create. Surfacing is usually reserved for more complex organic shapes that can't easily be achieved or that are impossible to achieve using solid modeling techniques. This could be by extruding a solid feature up to a surface, by using a surface to cut away from a solid, or by building from the ground up surface by surface. While there are situations where the final model remaining as a surface may be appropriate, Generally, when modeling in SOLIDWORKS, the end goal is to create a solid body so that you know it's a valid shape with correct mass properties. So now we've had a brief overview of what surfaces are, let's take a look at a few of the basic surfacing tools. SOLIDWORKS uses a variety of techniques to create surfaces, some of which you'll be familiar with from using the solid counterparts, including extrusions, revolves, sweeps, lofts, and fills. Surfacing also includes a variety of tools for editing surfaces too, including trimming, splitting, extending and knitting. Let's take a look at a simple surfacing example, in this case a hand grip. I've already created a new part and added a number of sketches. To begin, I'll create the main shape of the body using a surface loft. This requires a minimum of two profiles, in this case, two ellipses. And optionally, you can include guide curves too. The guide curves that I'm using here are splines and pull the loft to shape. Rather than the top of the grip being flat, instead, I'd like to have a slight curvature in either direction. And these two arc sketches will help achieve that. I can use the boundary surface and select one of the sketches for each direction. This blankets the area using both sketches to define the surface's shape. The trim tool can be used to get rid of excess material. If you select mutual, multiple surfaces can be selected which will trim each other where they intersect. You can choose whether to keep or remove the selected surfaces. Next, we'll add some detail by incorporating some cutouts which will improve the grip. I've got more splines sketched out and I want to project these into the existing surface of the grip. To do this, I'll use the split line which actually splits the face of the surface and creates some new faces and edges. These edges can then be used as a path for a surface sweep. I'll do this twice, each time using a circular profile option so that I don't have to draw a sketch manually for the profile. As I mentioned a moment ago, I want these to be cut out rather than material protruding from the body. So we next need to use the trim command again. Using mutual trim, 
I can select the outer of the sweep and the inner intersecting region of the main body, resulting in the lower part of the sweep being knitted to the main body. I could do the same for the second sweep, but to demonstrate a few different options, I'll show you another technique shortly. First, let's get this surface into a solid. To do that, I need to blank off the bottom, and this can be done using a plenier surface, as this area can be flat. The plenier surface isn't automatically joined to the main body. This needs to be done using the knit command. Simply select the main body and plenier surface when in the knit command, make sure the create solid is ticked, and hit the green tick. Now the model is solid, I can show the second technique to create the grip cutouts. And this uses a cut with surface. When in the cut with surface command, select the surface that you want to use to cut away with and specify the direction that it should cut, determined by the toggle in the properties. It looks as though nothing has happened, but that's because the original surface is still visible. Hide this away and the cut can be seen underneath. Solowitz Surfacing is a powerful tool that can be used to create a wide variety of complex 3D models. It is a valuable tool for engineers and designers who need to create products with intricate shapes and curves. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. And remember, if you're looking to create 3D interactive presentations from your CAD models, check out cadasio.com and find us on your favourite social media platforms.